let's join Michael Wolfe, a journalist, author um, of Fire and the Fury, the story of uh, Donald Trump's first nine months in the White House. He joins me live from outside the courthouse in uh, New York. Thanks for being with us, Michael. Well, it, it seems to be a circus in New York. Trump is the main act, and I imagine he's pretty happy with that. I, I don't think he can be happier at this point. I mean, in effect, this indictment has returned him from, from what a lot of people thought was the, the margins of politics to the center of it. Um, I know that a lot of people within his circle believe that last Thursday when he was indicted, that was the day that gave him the Republican nomination. So uh, we're, we're, you know, while, while many people are looking at this indictment um, and thinking Donald Trump has uh, finally been held accountable, um, uh, the, the people inside his circle are looking at this and saying, well, this indictment is, um, um, has, has changed the political landscape, overwhelmingly changed the political landscape in his favor. But it is humiliating for Donald Trump, the first American president to face criminal charges, and Donald Trump is not a man who I, likes I, being... I think that that's... I, I th let, me, uh, let me interrupt you. I think that's completely wrong. It is not... Humiliation does not cross Donald Trump's mind. Remember, this right. is a man who has been impeached twice. Right. Um, so I, I would... I would in, in terms of trying to understand that, the most important thing is not to credit Donald Trump with the feelings other normal people would have, because he doesn't have them. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. But I was thinking of, a, you know, Donald Trump, the president, in the White House one moment, and now being dragged through this court process as a common criminal. And you're saying he wouldn't be humiliated Ag by that? Again, yeah. No, no, and again, it is not Donald Trump the president, it is Donald Trump. In every, in, at every moment, it is him, the important thing for him is to continue to be Donald Trump. In that, I would define that as being the guy at the center of attention. So this, once again, and whether that's the, the, the White House is the center of attention, or, um, or the, the circus outside of a courtroom is the center of attention. It doesn't matter. He is still, he is Donald Trump. The world's eyes are on him, and that's the thing that he wants. I mean, there are two ways of looking at it, Michael. The first way is that it suits him politically, as you uh, appear to be suggesting. It puts him back front and center. He can play the victim, which he which he likes. The other way of looking at it is that it suits the Democrats because he is their preferred opponent. Maybe the Democrats really think he is their preferred opponent. I, I, I'm sure both of those things are exactly true, yes. Um, but um, let, let me just caution the Democrats that if he gets the, the Republican nomination, you know, then it's, he could very well become the president of the United States. That's, you know, Joe Biden may be stronger at this point, but nobody knows what's gonna happen. Presidential races are often decided by exogenous events. We don't know. So we are on a, a very um, slippery slope here. Um, to once again the prospect, the, the, the very real prospect that Donald Trump might become the president. You, th you think that is a, a real prospect, that he could not only win the primary, but he'd go on and, and win the White House again? You think that is a, a real prospect, do you? Well, if you ask, we, yeah, well, what we're seeing right now is a very real prospect of him getting the Republican nomination. I would say uh, that the chances of him winning the presidency are, uh, are if not, uh, are, are much less than, than Joe Biden's chances. But again, once, when there are only two people, you, you don't know. Lots of things can happen. 
So as soon as he gets the Republican nomination, yes, he is a very real contender for uh, the White House once again. Michael, I read your book and you've been inside the White House uh, with Trump's team when he was president inside Mar-a-Lago. What do you think he'll be thinking now? What will he be doing now? What will be his sort of manner with his team as he prepares to, to go to court today? I, I, I think he's very, well, it will be determined. It will be even enthusiastic. Um, this is all, um, this is all going his way at this point. Um, he will be on the, he will be on the phone with, with supporters and elected officials who are telling him that he's the greatest thing in the world. Um, and he will be on the phone with his lawyers seeking assurances that, um, uh, that he won't be, uh, that that he won't be convicted, that this will likely be thrown out, that um, that he is in no danger. And by the way, his lawyers will be giving him those assurances. Because if you're Donald Trump's lawyers, what you know is to tell him what he wants to hear. Um, so all in all, Donald Trump right now, this is a very good day for him.